Jumbo Visma come out swinging in the Alps, but Tare Pogacar fights back. This was the Jupla stage, not high altitude, but over 4,000 meters of climbing in about 140 k's at ascent finish then into Morzine. A very, very difficult stage with the Ramaz beforehand and a climb of over 30 minutes. Would Tare Pogacar take more time as he keeps dropping or inching closer to Jonas Vingegaard? But at the start... A lot of strong climbers wanted to get in the break. Powers for KOM points. But you see how this road is a little bit damp in places. There's manhole covers. There was a touch of rain at the start and a huge pileup. We haven't had too many of these so far on the tour. Many riders down. Pedrero Menke's out and the stage was neutralized for the time being with everyone having to have their wounds tended to. And some like Petit, you know, they, I don't know how he got through the stage. He had a huge gash in his leg, credit to him. But yeah, really tough start for a lot of riders who crashed and then have to contend with this madness with someone like Pedersen trying to launch Ciccone ahead on the climb straight out of the new neutral zone. And, you know, Trek have been good at this, using riders to launch their other, their climbers for the break. Lander makes the break. We're on the first Cat 1, 7.4%. K 7 A strong break is formed for Yamo Visma. They start pacing. They wanted to keep Lander in chains. And you got Ciccone here, Powerless, Jorgensen, Pino, Woods, really good climbers and Christophe Laporte has the ride of his life, keeping the gap really stable on the climbs. It went out a little bit 120 on the descents, but before the Ramaz, it already looked like the break had no chance. A bit of frivolity between Mark Soler. He says, you want a bit? You want a spray? Soler had sprayed the whole UAE train. He says, why not? I'll give you a little spray. And gives him, gives Teish Benoit a toot anyway. Why not? Love to see it. On the Ramaz. Yumbo smash, Laporte's gone, Van Hoydonk's time. It's like Sky Train but aggressive. Catch the Pino part of the breakaway with pulls, and it's only Ciccone and Woods ahead. Van Hoydonk gone, and now it's time for Teish Benoit to take over, and he would be the last man to bring back Giulio Ciccone. So the break's gone at 58 k's to go. Could they find a crack in Tari Pagaccia this stage for their leader, Jonas Vingegaard? And Pidcock was swinging with 5.5 k's to go on Ramaz, the second last climb. Time. Luckily for him, it leveled out a little bit when Dylan Van Bala started pacing. He could hold on, but when Van Aert took over, that was it for Pidcock's GC ambitions at this Tour de France, losing nine minutes on the stage. But UA looked good. Pagacha looked good. They got numbers. Micah, Yates, and Groschartner was hanging on a little bit there as well. So it wasn't like Yumbo had isolated Pagacha yet on this stage. And in fact, Kelderman was looking under pressure on the Ramaz under Van Aert's pricing. But on the descent, we didn't really see that something must have happened because you see here these gaps on this descent in the GC group, big splits, and that's not that usual for a descent. That's not that technical. 100 speeds of 105 k's. And then when you see the order of the front of the race, Van Aert has been pushing it, and Koos is not behind Vingegaard anymore. So I think Koos tried to back Pogaccia off Vingegaard's back wheel, and that's why we see Pogaccia on Vingegaard's wheel because he had to close the gap to Vingegaard on the descent. So Jumbo Visma pulling out all the stops, and that drops Gull and Simon Yates. The last thing you want before a 35-minute climb is to have to chase on the flat beforehand with Van Aert pushing, but now is the moment of truth for the big guns. Juplan, a brutal climb. Kelderman starts, but the pace isn't enough for Rafael Micah. He comes to the front. Initially, huge acceleration, puts almost everybody off the back, parks Van Aert, but then slows down a lot. And so Van Aert comes back to the front, ripping it and drops Rafael Micah himself with 10 k's to go on the climb and so UAE are down to Yates, Pagacha whilst Koos is there left in the wings for Jonas Vingegaard. So how long could Koos in his second Grand Tour already of the year could he go on this climb? We've got Gull at the back with Hindley who'd crashed earlier, Rodriguez the climb and stage of his life, Yates, Pagacha, Vingegaard, Koos and Koos has got a long way to go. 9k, 7.5k's and he doesn't have anyone ahead like on Altacam last year to drop like Van Aert to drop Vingegaard off to, to pull. Pagacha drops his bid on, but Yates is there. The beauty of having Domestiques gives him his water bottle after spraying some over himself. And so Pagacha isn't without that extra bid on. And so when was Vingegaard going to move? Jumbo Visma were obviously trying to set something up. Gull gets dropped and Hindley's now dropped. And he did crash earlier, as I said. So maybe that caused him to go off the back. And so Rodriguez, if he can stay here, is gaining time. Pagacha puts Yates to the front, though. 
He's obviously feeling good. You don't tell your dom last domestique to absolutely light it up unless you think you can attack. And that's exactly what Tare Pogaccio was setting up with Rodriguez just behind. Attacks Vingegaard with that burst. It wasn't as long as other stages, but it was enough to gap Vingegaard initially. And this looked like the tour could be ending on the Zhu plan. But the gap doesn't open up. Pogaccio is going strong, but the gap's at three, four, five seconds, but it never really goes above five seconds, with Vingegaard just holding his own tempo and Pogaccio stalling a little bit, with the first of a few lookbacks coming, eventually caught by Vingegaard with 1,700 metres left on the climb, but would Jonas go over the top of him? The answer was no. He gets back to him and goes to the front, and they basically slow pace the rest of the climb with no attacks from either of them. Rodriguez, he comes through, he was a minute, over a minute back, and you look at that gap, absolutely tumble to these guys when Pogaccio attacks, and he's blocked by the motorbikes. This was the big controversy of this stage. Pogaccio going for the eight bonus seconds on top of Plan and blocked by the motos. That cost him six seconds today. Maybe he's won every other sprint ahead of Vingegaard so far. And when Vingegaard actually launches 150 meters, Pogaccio was caught napping. And he can't immediately get back to Vingegaard's wheel nor go around him. And so these two, there's a little plateau before the descent. They stop. And Rodriguez goes straight over the top of them, carrying momentum before the descent, already has Pogaccio off the wheel, and drops him through this hairpin, takes a better line, and that's him gone. You can see him down below between the names. He's dropped Pogaccio. Vingegaard's trying to get past Pogaccio, and Yates himself is dropped on the descent, with Pogaccio going full gas, because the stage wind's going up the road as well. And the 10 bonus seconds, Vingegaard with a little shutter, breaking a bit too close to Tani Pogaccio's rear wheel, but they couldn't bring back Rodriguez should Pogaccio here have let Adam Yates go clear because then Pogaccio would have taken more of a bonus second delta to Vingegaard obviously difficult to think about that in real time because Rodriguez was gone the Spaniard the 22 year old on a brutal mountain stage best the greats using his technical prowess with Pogaccio coming second unable to get rid of Vingegaard in the sprint an absolutely cracking stage Rodriguez wins the stage five seconds ahead of Pogaccio and Vingegaard in second and third then Yates, Coos, Hindley, Gull both on 146 big gaps in this stage and 319 and 321 to Simon Yates they started looking at each other I thought going full gas to the finish I can descend more or less well so I wanted to, to take advantage of it. I took some risks without going to the absolute women because I didn't want to crash, but although I was close in a couple of corners that I thought that weren't so sharp, but yeah, super happy with this victory. But in terms of GC, a big shake up in the top 10, not much in the top two, but Rodriguez moves into third a single second ahead of Jai Hindley. Yates stays in fifth, Coos moves all the way up into sixth, and feel this goal into the top 10 as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be back with the stage 15 tomorrow. Another pretty difficult medium mountain stage. Let me know who you think will win that one. I'll see you with a recap tomorrow. Ciao.